wanted to explain my solution to day 16. Um, so as you can see, I've written a C++ program that computes the answers to both parts in three seconds. Uh, so how does it work? Um, so first of all, what is the problem? Um, this is definitely the hardest advent of code problem so far this year. Uh, so we're given uh, basically a graph as input. Um, so we have these different valves, and they have tunnels or edges leading to other valves. And each valve also has a number, um, the flow rate associated with it which is if you go to that valve and spend a minute opening it, uh, then you score points equal to that flow rate every minute afterwards. Um, and in part one, you have 30 minutes to run around this graph opening. It. So it costs a minute to travel through an edge, and it costs a minute to open a valve. In part one, you have 30 minutes to wander around this graph opening valves, um, and you want to see what's the highest score you can get. Uh, and then in part two, uh, there's you get two players wandering around the graph um, who can act independently, but you only have 26 minutes. Uh, so ultimately, I came up with what I think is a pretty cool uh, dynamic programming solution to this problem. Um, so let me, yeah, I guess we'll start with uh, this function, which is sort of the height of the problem, um, which is uh, if I am at valve p1 and I've opened the set of valves u, and I have time minutes left. And there are other players acting after me. How many points can I score? Okay, so that's the meaning of F, um, which is, I guess, like a subproblem. So in the original, Uh, problem. I start at position zero. I start with no valves opened. I have 30 minutes and there's no other players. And in part two, I start at position zero. There are no valves opened. I have 26 minutes and there's one other player. Um, okay, so how does this work? So if I'm out of time, well, okay, this is actually the key insight for part two. I'll explain that later. Um, so first we memoize. Uh, so uh, let me explain the non-memoization part, and then I'll explain the memoization. Like, this is a recursive solution to this problem, which says, well, either you can open your current valve, or you can take a tunnel to a different location. So you can only open your current valve if it's not already opened. And it only makes sense to try opening the valve if it would actually score you points. Um, this is a key thing that you had to notice about the input, is that only a few of the valves had like flow rate more than zero. In my input, it was 15 of the 50 valves had input had flow rate more than zero. So if this does seem like a, good, a valve that you might want to try opening, um, then you score points. So for every minute after this, you score RP1 points. Um, and then you are in a recursive subproblem where you don't change your position. You did open a new valve, and you spent one minute and the elephant can still go after you if that's a thing. The other thing you can do is walk to a new location. Um, in which case, you just don't score any points. You just move to a new location. You haven't opened any new valves, and you spent a minute. Uh, and the best possible score we can get is just the maximum of our score over these two possible you know, types, over all the possible moves we can make. Um, and so if you just ran like this solution, uh, you would just be exploring all possible uh, like actions, you know, steps whatever actions you could take um, like in this graph, uh, which would be a valid solution, right? Like just consider everything you could possibly do. One of them is the best thing to do. Uh, but that's way too slow because, I don't know, you can do at least like two or three things every turn. And uh, if you have to, true, have to like go through two or three options 30 times, uh, that's a huge matching factor. It's like, you know, two to the 30 is a billion. So if I have to choose two options 30 times in a row, then I have to explore a billion different possibilities. And there's more than two options at a time. Uh, so it's going to be much more than that. However, uh, this is where we can use DP, or dynamic programming. Uh, so the idea of DP is if I get to the same position again, uh, it doesn't really matter how I got there. I don't need to recompute the answer if I already know the answer um, for that situation. So the situation is I'm at a position, 
and I have a set of open valves, and I have time minutes left, right? So, you know, if I walk from A to B to C, or from A to D to C, it doesn't really matter. I'm still at C in two minutes. Um, so the point of like a DP solution is that there aren't that many different positions. How many different positions are there? Uh, or states, I'll say. So the biggest contributing factor is that there's 2 to the 15 um, subsets of valves that could be open. There are 50 possible positions I could be at. Uh, there are 27 possible values for time, and there are two possible values for other players. The total number of states is the product of these. So 2 to the 15 times 50 times 27 times 2 uh, is roughly 88 million. And that's uh, good news, because 88 million, I mean, it's a lot for like a person to look at, but it's actually not that much for a computer to look at. Um, so this should be efficient. Uh, I guess also of note is that I'm compressing the state information into a integer so that I can use a vector as a DP table. Um, in the actual solution I used in the contest, I used a map as a DP, DP table, and it was a lot slower. It took like 70 seconds to solve for my solution to run, as opposed to three seconds. Um, and the, basically, the only change I made is using a vector instead of a map. Uh, so that makes a big difference. So the way that DP works is if I've already solved the state, then just return the answer. And once I solve the state, then write down that answer for the state. Um, and like just adding these lines makes it run much, much faster. Because instead of exploring all possible like paths of act, you know, like sequences of actions I could take, I only need to explore all possible states I could be in. And the point of DP is when the number of states is much smaller than the number of sequences of actions, which is common. Um, OK, so uh, that's how you do part one. Well, let me talk about part two, uh, which I think a lot of people found very challenging. Um, it adds a second player, basically. So you get an elephant who can do exactly the same things you can do, and you only get 26 instead of 30 minutes. Um, so I think the way that I formulated this DP actually solved this in a really nice way, which is I also track how many players are going after me. So the way I think about it is the problem says, okay, you and the elephant are sort of working at, at the same time, right? Like you move to valve II and the elephant moves to valve DD, um, which is totally, so, and that's initially how I tried to solve it, but I found it very hard to solve it thinking about it that way. Um, instead, I want to think about it as if you go first and then make all your decisions. And then the elephant goes and makes all his decisions. Um, so yeah, you can see that I'm just picking actions like for me here. And then when I run out of time, if the elephant hasn't gone yet, then reset to the elephant's turn. So he's at position zero. He has 26 minutes to act, but he can't open any valves that I already opened. So you keep the same set of open valves because he can't score points, you know, for a valve that I already scored. Uh, and then also, you know, there's no other players. Um, and if we've both, you know, gone, then the answer is zero because there's no one left to score points. Uh, so the way I set this up here, it could also very easily generalize to like there being three elephants or ten elephants. Um, and it's actually only a small increase in the runtime um, because you just multiply by this dimension of how many players there are. So uh, adding a second player only increases the runtime by a factor of two, uh, which is pretty nice compared to like the other solutions I was thinking about increase the runtime by like a factor of 50 um, or more for the elephant. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to say. I guess I'll say a little bit about parsing. It's not as nice in C++ as it was in Python, but anyway, that's okay. C++ runs faster. Um, so we just you know read all the lines, grab the ID of the valve, grab the uh, flow rate, and grab the 
uh, you know, other the valves that it's connected to with tunnels. Um, and then, uh, rather than working with strings, it's nicer to work with integers. Um, so instead of the valve being A, A, B, B, C, C, I'm going to label them 0, 1, 2. Uh, I'm going to have the starting position be 0. And then I want all of the valves that actually have um, non-zero flow rate to be first. Uh, right. So rather than assigning you know, this guy FF, instead of being valve 5, is actually valve like 8 or something. He gets pushed to the back. And the reason for that is that I want uh, this. So I'm using a bit set to keep track of which valves I've opened. And I want that to be kind of small. So like it fits, I get nice integers for my DP array. Um, and so I want the bits in this set to be uh, small. Um, so I'm pushing. Uh, and the bits in the set will be small if the IDs of the open valves are small. Um, so anyway, I've yeah, picked, picked my IDs to make that convenient and the rest. Um, and then we just keep track of, you know, for each valve ID, uh, what's the flow rate through it, and also which other valves is it connected to. Um, and then we can just run the DP and solve the problem. And as I said, uh, that just takes a couple seconds to run. Um, so yeah, that's it. See you tomorrow.